Hi everybody, so what we've got here is some plexiglass with two magnets on it, north and south facing each other, a voltmeter and a bit of wire. And we're about to do something that probably everybody's done in their physics class. Let's pass a wire between those two magnets. Okay, so we passed the wire in that direction and sure enough we got a voltage reading because we're inducing a current. And if you remember your dynamo rule, it's motion, force, current, like that. And they're all at right angles to each other is exactly why this works. The field for the magnets is going that way. We're moving the wire that way and the current comes out that way, just like in our right hand rule. So, question. What happens if we move the wire that way so that the force, if you like, the motion and the field are in the same direction, or rather not at 90 degrees to each other? Well, let's give that a try. And how about that? That actually doesn't generate anything. Okay. So, this is one of the reasons people hate physics. You're waggling little bits of wire around and making these huge assumptions and it all seems pretty meaningless. What is the meaning of that? Well, let's have a look at this. This is the stator from an electric motor. And you'll notice there's a huge amount of copper here and a huge amount of copper here and very little here. About a quarter to a third of that weight of copper is actually in that bit there. That bit is the only bit that can generate. This bit, which is the top of the coils, is like the wire going in that direction. Even if there is a magnetic field, it's not going to do anything because it's not in the right direction. So this lump of copper, massive lump of copper here and here, does nothing but add cost and weight to a motor. If it's, oh, sorry, a generator, sorry. If it's adding weight, of course, what it's doing is bringing down the power density. If it's adding cost, what it's doing is bringing up the cost per kilowatt hour. So a huge, huge question. What do you do about something like that? Because you, you need to join those wires together, obviously. But doing it like this is tremendously wasteful. Surely there must be a better way. OK, I've got a bit of 16 gauge enamelled wire here. Now, we all know that if I wind up a coil so that we've got more wire going through that magnetic field, then we're going to get a higher voltage. It's your Lorentz's law. So there's my coil nicely wound up. And as I connect that up and pass it through that magnetic field, I'll get much more generation. And this is the principle on which generators and motors work. And we can do that. There we go. Now, there's no difference between me having a coil wound up like that, or if I want to pull that coil out into a zigzag pattern like that. Give that a twist that way, there we go. And we get ourselves an M. Those and the coil I originally wound are exactly the same thing as far as the magnet is concerned. And that is far more interesting than it first appears. And this is far more interesting because this is what serpentine coils are all about. So the process is basically pretty simple. You start off with just a great big coil of wire that you've coiled to the right length to fit in the spaces of a former. You obviously make those blocks up the size of your magnets and then take that single coil and bend it round the former that you've made. And it can be a little tough to jam those bits of copper in there, but you jam them in there all around the former, and the former is just a copy of the magnets that you're going to be passing it over. Now, it's pretty common to make three of those. That would be a single phase. With three of them, you uh, make a three phase, and they're all identical. Once you've made three of those, you can lay them on top of each other, and when you lay them on top of each other, what you get is either your stator or your rotor, depending whether you're going to rotate the magnets or rotate the coil. 
Serpentine coils came in with the advent of axial flux generators, particularly coreless axial flux generators. And the coreless axial flux are the forefront of research for home scale micro generation because they solve such a lot of other issues. But Serpentine really is about the sweet tedium of winding individual coils that are complete and not a pain in the neck. Serpentine coils certainly make that aspect of the job very much easier because you're just binding one big coil and forcing it into a former. But they don't do anything about one of those important issues. If you noticed, the serpentine has straight shape and then a bend and then a straight shape. The only bit of generation is in that straight shape. You want that straight piece to be crossing the whole of your magnet. Any of that top piece of the coil that crosses the magnet just takes up magnetic flux and reduces the length of wire that's actually experiencing the magnetic flux. Remember your Fleming rule. And that is a waste. So it doesn't do anything for the lump of copper above and below. It just solves the issue of how to wind a coil without winding lots of individual coils. Now, there is a solution to that waste of copper and we're going to cover that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope um, serpentine coils are of interest to you because they do have their place and they are stunningly easy to um, make and use in a coreless axial flux generator. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.